So what's good, TMG fam? It's your boy L, and I'm back with another reaction. How y'all feel? Welcome back to the channel. Salute. Now, the connection between UFOs and cattle, we've been trying to figure that out for the longest. So in today's video, I hope we dive a little bit deeper and try to solve this mystery and unexplained phenomenon that's been taking place. All right. So if you're new, hit that subscribe button. Join the family. Let's check this out. Welcome to another episode of Destination Declassified, the channel that continues to investigate the strange happenings and conspiracy theories that plague our world. It's safe to say that most human beings have a positive relationship with animals. For some, especially pet owners, a loving, respectable care for animals and wildlife is paramount and ingrained from an early age. For others, animals are solely used for work, hunting or food production. With animal welfare charities and institutions, such as WWF, as well as the documenting and exposure of their lives and hardships by the likes of David Attenborough, the bond between humans and animals is pretty strong. Unfortunately, as we can see from the recent environmental catastrophes, as well as the sickening cruelty towards our fellow beings, certain animals are at risk of becoming extinct or forced from their natural habitat, which I'm sure you will agree is a monumental crisis and colossal failure on our part to a certain extent. However, what if the livelihood and well-being of the animal kingdom, especially those who reside in the open areas of farmland, were in fact being targeted by entities not of this earth? In this video, we will look at the historic, not to mention shocking stories of cattle mutilation that have been reported and discussed at length throughout the years and across the United States, as well as the conspiracies that have followed in their wake. Join us as we attempt to uncover the mystery regarding the strange cattle deaths of the 1970s and that of UFOs in this episode of Destination Declassified. Unless one is of a deprived mindset, the image of a dead animal, or one that has been mistreated in any manner, is a tragedy, and not something that anyone wishes to see. Unfortunately, with big game hunting, roadside deaths, and interpredatory conflicts throughout the world and its variety of landscapes, this image is unavoidable in most regions of Earth. Documentarians and filmmakers also portray animals in various ways, either for realistic or dramatic effect a few of which are related to extraterrestrials or the UFO phenomenon. Linda Moulton Howe, an American reporter, filmmaker and author from Stanford, is commonly seen in documentaries and investigative reports concerning history and that of unexplained events. During her study of animal mutilations, Howe would delve into a strange case of more than 1,000 farm animal deaths. She would develop and produce her 1980 Emmy Award-winning documentary, A Strange Harvest, and follow up on the story with her 1989 book, An Alien Harvest, further evidence linking animal mutilations and human abductions to alien life forms. So this is deeper than I thought. We don't hear about it enough to think it was a, 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 a big thing, but that just goes to show you how certain stories get buried and things like that. Like, I've heard of the cases, I think I want to say in Texas, maybe, where I heard about the cattle incident and phenomenon going on. Not too many other places. But for somebody to do a, a, a study and then publish a book. This has been going on for a long time, but it seems to me that it's been downplayed. Something as serious as this, especially when we talk about animal extinction a lot. We talk about that a lot. So if we have some kind of weird thing going on that could be assisting that extinction. I would think that would be talked about just as much. It's interesting to me. Very. Further evidence linking animal mutilations and human abductions to alien life forms. Howe's education and investigative endeavors led her to a particular case that focused on Lady a horse which was found dead on a ranch in Alamosa, Colorado in September 1967. The poor mammal lay on the ground, 
having had most of her skin ripped from her body, as well as her thyroid, lungs and heart, cut from her interior with careful precision. With initial speculation pointing to an animal attack or a cruelly planned ambush on the horse, the town's local court judge declared within 24 hours of Lady's body being found that he had witnessed three large orange rings in the sky, which were flying in a triangular formation at high speed. Charles Burnett's bizarre proclamation was backed up by two deputy sheriffs who had also reported being followed in the area by a floating orange globe. Coincidence? Let's dig deeper. Another more recent depiction of the link between animals and UFOs was the summer blockbuster film, Nope, directed by Jordan Peele and starring Daniel Kaluuya, Kiki pa And this is not an ad, but if you have not seen that movie, Nope, it'll change your thought process of, of things. You'll start looking at the sky differently, looking at clouds differently, and I don't want to ruin the movie for you, but Nope, N-O-P-E, it's the name of the movie, go check it out, really good one. Palmer and Stephen Yuen. Known for having subtle undertones and hidden meanings within his movies, yep. Peely discussed the true message at the heart of the story, with both film enthusiasts and critics alike, the messages being the welfare and treatment of animals. Upon first viewing, the film depicts the pending invasion and attack by a large-scale UFO, nicknamed Jean Jacket, and the small group of characters who decide to protect their farmland and animals against the alien entity. It is only after the credits roll that, knowing it to be a Jordan Peele movie, we look at the secret codes and genuine intention of the film's agenda. Without trying to spoil the film's entertaining visuals, likeable characters and dramatic finale, the scenes involving a chimpanzee named Gordy and the horses that live on the ranch are worth focusing on, and are the true stars of the film. Abduction and violence before these subplotted characters events that symbolize the lack of appreciation and respect in which humans have for their fellow beings in relation to their instinctive nature and purpose in life. The exploitation of animals is portrayed in violent, bloody scenes, as well as the strange, surgical-like extraction of organs, teeth and skin, which are orchestrated and conducted by the UFO, Jean Jacket. Perhaps Jordan was trying to tell us something after all. Back in the real world, reports of cattle mutilation and massive loss of livestock have been reported and debated for decades. The most prominent era of this terrifying scenario occurred during the 1970s and centered mainly within the United States. As mentioned, the discovering of dead animals, either in the wild or in urban areas, is not uncommon and a natural occurrence in most places. However, when these animals are found without tongues, lymph nodes, genitalia, and show no sign of blood loss, things become a little more intriguing. What? <laughs> when we dig deeper and into the mysterious cover-ups and conspiracies surrounding massive loss of farmland mammals, one can relate the cause and manner of death to the now declassified documents concerning the Lovett Cunningham incident. Perhaps the full story can be documented and discussed another day in another video, but with regards to the similarities, it is worth a brief summary. The Levette Cunningham incident, as it's become known, involved an American Air Force sergeant named Jonathan P. Lovett, who was allegedly abducted by a saucer-like craft and observed by Major William Cunningham. After the supposed close encounter and disappearance of Sergeant Lovett, his mutilated body was found in the New Mexico desert, having been cleanly skinned and void of certain body parts. Ufologists and investigators of the unexplained believe the abduction was reported in detail through Project Grudge and their six and Now, out of everything we've covered, that's the first time I've heard an abduction in that way and him being severely harmed like that. Most of the time you hear people talk about him, they say they they encountered something, it followed them, it stopped, then they, they kind of froze, They the body parts kind of went limp. There's a, about a couple hours of a gap in their memory missing you know what I mean? There was a bright light. There was, uh, uh, looks like maybe a physical performed on them where they were being analyzed or tinkered with or something like that. And then they're put back. And then they're, they spend the rest of the time trying to figure out what happened. This, that's the first time I've ever heard of something like that happening to somebody. 
So that should be noted. 100 page document named Report 13. The project itself was one of the earliest US Air Force programs, which was seemingly tasked with investigating sightings of unidentified flying objects in the years following World War II. The incident remains unsolved to this day, with no official explanation or conclusive evidence or declaration wow. being presented by the government. Wow. So let us dissect the most prominent and well-known cases of animal mutilation and the possible link they have to alien abduction or extraterrestrial aircraft. In 1974, the year that resulted in multiple cattle deaths across the state of Nebraska, farmers and families reported seeing unidentified crafts and lights in the sky, either around the time or on the evening of their slaughter. By August 20th, 1974, the massacre had reached the highly populated area of Lancaster County and had attracted local journalistic reporters to the scene, including those from the daily newspaper, the Lincoln Journal Star. Despite general skepticism, the press ran a story that documented bizarre sightings of unidentified black helicopters that had been seen in the soon-to-be areas of bloodshed, their spotlights having shone directly on the farmlands and animals that resided at each spot. Although the claims were denied by the Federal Aviation Administration and National Guard, who claimed to be unaware of such strange activities, the aerial authorities had to inform their helicopter pilots to increase their altitude height from 1,000 feet to 2,000 feet for fear of their safety. Farmers, ranchers and local concerned citizens set up night vigils with the intention of protecting their livestock and land by conducting armed rotational posts. The concern had grown so strong in the community that the men and women of the farmlands were not hesitant to shoot directly at any oncoming aerial threat. And yet, despite the attempted concealment of information and reduction in flyby missions by militarized aircraft, many began to believe that something sinister was going on behind the scenes, especially at Fort Riley. The United States Army installation is located in north central Kansas on the Kansas River and is also known as the Corps and was the subject of numerous conspiracy theories amongst the ranch owners of Nebraska and expanding areas for a short period. The black helicopter theory is linked to a conspiracy that the United States are attempting a globalized takeover and mass surveillance operation, possibly linked to extraterrestrials and UFOs, and deploy such machines to conduct their affairs. Hal Lindsey, the best-selling American evangelical writer, discusses the theory in his book, The Late Great Planet Earth published in 1970 and has subsequently amassed numerous investigations and discursive groups since its publication. Similar to the outcry and events that transpired in Lancaster County between April and October of 1975, it was reported that as many as 200 cases of cattle mutilation were recorded in the state of Colorado alone. Much like their fellow ranchers, armed vigilante groups took turns at maintaining the grounds for fear of a potential attack or invasion from the black helicopters or worse. One of the claims whose narrative changed throughout the land and gossip trail was that the animals were being killed and mutilated by organized cult groups. In 1980, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police had investigated a mysterious unidentified cult whom they believed to be behind the ritualistic killings. Meanwhile in Iowa, the Department of Criminal Investigations decided to go further by pointing the finger at local Satanist groups who practiced devil worship, black magic, and other forms of the occult. Udders, sex organs, and other body parts used for creating offspring had been removed from the carcasses with sharp, clean instruments and were regularly drained of blood. When there was no evidence of human interference, such as tire marks or footprints, many began to wonder if indeed the attacks were of a mysterious alien-like origin. Exactly. Sounds like to me, they needed somebody to take the fall for this. And who not to get everybody riled up, riled up about some type of group that people would dislike or disapprove of. Hmm, easy enough. We could point the finger at them. And you won't think too much about it because as soon as you hear the name and, and the group, you're gonna automatically say, yep, they probably did that. Sickos, they probably did that. Instead of stepping back and saying, let's do a little more research. Oh, 
No tire tracks, no tire marks, nothing like that. No footprints. So how could that be possible? <laughs> they not gonna they not gonna pull the wool over our eyes, I promise, man. We on to them, bro. We on to them. Many began to wonder if indeed the attacks were of a mysterious alien-like origin. Conspiracy circles became front and center of the discussion when the story of Dane Edwards emerged. Edwards had been a well-known publisher and editor of the Brush Banner newspaper, which is situated in the city of Brush, Colorado, and had decided to fully investigate the theories of cattle mutilation once and for all. His conclusion was that the government was testing cattle parts at various facilities in order to develop biological weapons to use during the years of the Vietnam War. His assumptions were sent in writing to the Senator for the state of Colorado, Floyd K. Haskell, who had himself been investigating the incidents and subsequently threatened by authorities to remain silent on the matter. Edwards would take part in an interview for the Colorado Springs Gazette Telegraph in the latter months of 1975, where he spoke of the concerns from local farming communities as well as his own theory on government interference and potential cover-ups. Not long after his hiring at the Gazette and outspoken views on a possible conspiracy, Dane Edwards was fired by the Pulitzer Prize winning newspaper and then suddenly disappeared. On so if we're going to make this, this bold claim that it's possibly or allegedly the government that's doing this and taking the body parts and utilizing them for weaponry and different things like that, if we're gonna say that, then we have to take a step back and look at all the other extinctions that have possibly taken place throughout the years, don't we? What's going on here? I'm pretty sure these groups that are out here forming, formulating and coming together to help save some of these animals would love to know who they're saving them from. This is interesting to hear, man. <laughs> November 5th, 1975, Edwards' wife reported him as a missing person, but no one would hear or see him, at least in the public arena or in journalistic circles, until 30 years later, where he was tracked down to an English language instruction program in Mexico under the name Dr. David Ellsworth. It has been covered on this channel in the past that when one gets too close to the truth, whether it be freelance investigation or general curiosity, these brave men and women suddenly vanish into thin air, or at least backtrack and change their stories completely. Could it be that Dane Edwards was on the cusp of discovering something terrifyingly groundbreaking and was therefore silenced, or potentially brainwashed into another person entirely? Let's hope for the sake of truth and for Edwards himself that this was not the case. Finally, in 1979, after thousands of deaths, multiple UFO sightings, and millions of dollars in losses, the FBI conducted their own investigation into the incidents, especially as one of those to demand such a conclusive report was US Senator and former Apollo 17 astronaut, Harrison Schmidt. However, yet again, the government's findings were frustratingly vague and disappointing, as on January 15, 1980, the Bureau shut down the investigation by stating, none of the reported cases has involved what appear to be mutilations by anything other than common predators. And so the reports, sightings and investigations were quashed by aerial and governing bodies, much to the anger and disbelief of those in the farming business. However, the speculation and conspiracy theories would only grow more prominent with the stories that have emanated from Northeastern Utah and the large privatized property known as Skinwalker Ranch. The site is known to be a hotspot and potential government base that is subject to countless paranormal, supernatural, and extraterrestrial events over the years. Dating back to the property's purchase in 1996, Terry Sherman, a rancher, bought the 512 acre piece of land, but quickly encountered strange occurrences within his new abode. Enormous wolf-like creatures, yellow-eyed humanoid beings, and UFO technologies are all set to reside in this subsection of the Beehive State, with documentarians, researchers, and live streamers all looking to get to the bottom of the mystery. Whatever it is that lurks within its quarters, it certainly made its presence known by decapitating and mauling most of Sherman's livestock, 
not long after he settled into the dwellings of Skinwalker Ranch. Another theory as to how and why the 1970s was rife with cattle mutilations is due to the economic climate at the time, and often discussed by historians and farmers alike. British historian Michael Golliman argues the possibility that such losses in farm animal life is not only a mundane, run-of-the-mill occurrence, but may have actually been self-inflicted by the ranchers and farmhands themselves. In his argument, Goleman proposes the idea that smaller independent ranch owners had killed their livestock purposely in order to magnify their financial constraints and worry, as well as their resentment for government interference in agricultural life. During the 1970s, President Richard Nixon froze the price of beef in order to withstand the cost of inflation, which ultimately forced farmers into a difficult economic predicament. I might could possibly buy that if it not for how they were taken, how the mutilation was taking place. If it wasn't for that, you know, the tongues being removed, different things like that, why would a, far a farmer, if he was mad and upset with different things that they were doing to them, then he'd go out there and just do it real quick. But the way that they were done, the cattle, says something else to me. To me, you know what I mean? It just, it, it, it don't seem right. I just don't believe that, that farmers claim that it, that it was them. Resulting in losses of almost $5 billion. Could it be that the reason for the cover-up and misdirection on theories concerning the massive loss of livestock was perpetrated by those who claimed to be the victims of such a heinous act of cruelty? What do you think? In more recent times, stories of alien abduction and mutilation of cattle is not taken too seriously and often portrayed in jest, with the likes of cartoons displaying cows being sucked up into spaceships, or simply dismissed as old news. Hopefully one day we will know the truth and understand what happened to these poor animals as we progress ever closer to a full disclosure and declassification of the UFO and alien phenomenon. In today's progressive world, the protection, respect, and understanding of animals and their needs is constantly growing for the better. Regardless of where one places themselves on the so-called food chain, we must learn to coexist with our animal friends and respect their boundaries for the sake of our planet's progression, as well as our own human decency. It is often said that we humans are the only species that insists on destroying our planet, whilst our fellow animals, insects, birds, and marine life are playing their part in sustaining what is left of it. With this in mind, we must also be aware of threats to the animal kingdom, which are unbeknownst to ourselves. Threats which may in fact come from the most unlikely of places, and from the most sinister of creatures. Thanks for watching this episode of Destination Declassified. Yeah, I don't know if I'm buying that with the farmers. I, I just don't. Uh, I, like I said, they're upset, they're going to do it, they're going to go out there and do it quick. And, and not be so methodical about certain things and parts of the cattle. No, I don't see that happening, you know? And then they said at the end, people just don't care. I don't feel like they don't care. I just feel like they've been told so many different lies and it's been spun all the way around the truth so much that they don't know what to believe. People just don't know what to believe. You, you don't know who to believe these days, man. Listen to how many different claims we heard in this one video about what could have possibly happened with this cattle situation. And we still left wondering or pointing the finger or having different theories. That's the problem. And that's why people end up being like, you know what, I just, I don't care. It is what it is. And I think that's the way they like it. But listen, y'all get at me in the comment section, man, and let me know what you thought of this video and this situation. And have you heard anything about this? Or it's just all been rumor and theory to you? Put it in the comment section. And stick around and stay tuned, man. Till next one, I'm gone. Peace.